One of our main products is to create detailed drawings or annotated drawings or multi-view drawings, however you want to title that. They're all the, kind of the same thing. So in this particular video, we have this part up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a detailed drawing of that. One of the first things I do is try to simplify. So over here on the on the left side, I have my data panel up. I really don't need that. In fact, it would be better if I could make more space on my screen. So I'm going to just close that out. Remember, though, I can always click that, that data panel or the waffle right there and get it right back up if I need to. So our goal here is to create a multi-view drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right up here to where it says design and we're gonna go down to drawing the very last one now we have two options here we have from design or from animation uh, for this video we're just gonna do from design so we'll click there and then we get a little box that pops up that says create drawing it's gonna ask us a few questions uh, I usually leave for full assembly open but as we progress later you may just want to have visible only it just depends for right now I'm just gonna leave it at the default for drawing, I'm going to go ahead and say create new. And for template, if I have a template made, this is where I could choose it. If not, and for now, we can just say from scratch. And we'll take the ASME standards and we'll, we'll use our unit in inches. Now I will say on sheet size, there's two size A's. This one is going to be a portrait. So remember back to the printing days. You know, this is where we're vertical with the paper, and this is where we're horizontal or landscape. Highly recommend using landscape. So I choose the second one down, the 11 by 8.5. So once I get through all these things, I'm going to click OK. And what's going to happen is it's going to create a file for us. It's going to create that document. So because I said from design, you notice I already have the part in there. I already have my base view in there. So I'll just click it and place it. Now from here, before I move on, I may want to decide, hey, do I want to use a different scale? Right now I'm using basically half. I could say one to one, and I'm going to try that out. So I'm going to click OK on that. And you notice that it puts that view in there. Now, one of the things we want, this is a multi-view drawing, so we need the top we need the right side view over here and we need an isometric so to do that we'll go up here over drawing and you see there's base view here's projected view and that's going to be what we use so we'll click that and it's going to say alright what's your parent view and that is essentially our base view so we'll click that and notice it already projects for us so there's we're just going to move our mouse up I'm not clicking anything right now I'm just moving the mouse up and once I get it where I want it, then I'll left click and place it. Now over here, and all I did was just move my mouse down, over here is going to be my right side view. So I'm going to just left click to place it. Then I'm going to move up here, and I'm going to left click again to place that isometric view. When I'm done, I can right click and hit OK. So I've got all my views up. Now, here's some things that we typically do. We would actually double click on our isometric view here. And we are going to choose the shaded view over here. So the last one. And that will, that will color it in for us. And we'll just hit close. And that gives the builder or the fabricator just a better idea of what's going on. Now, let's play like your hidden lines didn't show up. What we can do is we can double click that. And we can actually go here because it's probably on one of these. It's probably just on visible edges. And what that means is hidden lines don't show. If we go to the second one over, though, it'll put those hidden lines in for us. And then we can just hit close. Now from here comes the challenging part of we're going to annotate this thing. That means we're going to apply some dimensions. First things I always do is I'll, I'll put my center line bisectors in there and my center marks. So let me show you how that works. Here's a center line bisector, and we know that this right here is a hole because we can see it from our right side view. If you get really confused, that's why we actually include the isometric. Sometimes that gives us more detail about what's going on. But the bisector, I'm just going to click 
right there and you notice it puts a center line in there for me. Now I'm going to want to do the same thing over here and then for our right side view I'm actually going to put a center mark so this one right here. So I click center mark and then I'm going to click the circle and put it in there. From here we're going to go ahead and start dimensioning. This is a really really important one. This is where we're actually going to apply some dimensions. So I'll click that in I'm going to say from here to here and then I'm just going to move my mouse up to where I want that to go is 1.5 and then I'm going to say you know what from here over to here now notice that that showed up at an angle if I would just drag that straight up it's going to stay at an angle but if I move my mouse over to the left a little bit it'll straighten itself up so I've got those numbers now from here I would place the remainder of my dimensions so I'm gonna leave that open for you but I did want to show you how to actually apply some dimensions before I exit the video one thing that's really important is for you to actually locate this hole so that we know where to drill it at so I'm gonna actually come over here and I'm gonna say from here to the to the plus sign I need to know that dimension and then from here to here I need to know that dimension now one of our problems with that though is we really want to try to keep that between views if possible if we would drag it up here though it's crossing a lot of object lines the other thing is we need to put a diameter on that hole so notice dimension is still clicked in while we're on this if I hover over it it gives me a little bit more information about it notice that right next to the dimension it has D in parentheses if I were just to press the D key on the keyboard it's gonna it's gonna open up dimensions for me so it's kind of a shortcut there I need to put a diameter on this circle so I'm gonna I'm gonna click on the circle and I'm just gonna move this diameter out here that's how we do any kind of curved feature or circle 